Now we will differentiate the cosine function. And earlier we learned that the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. And that fact will make differentiating the cosine function pretty easy. So here's our problem. f of x is equal to cosine x. And we want to find the derivative of that function. And to do this, we're going to use a trig identity. And this is probably one that you do know. And even if you don't, it's easy to understand. The trig identity is this. Cosine x, that's what we're trying to differentiate. Cosine x is equal to the sine of x plus pi over 2. Now you can see this graphically. If you make a quick sketch of the sine function, which looks something like this, approximately. So this is pi here, and pi over 2 is right there. And the cosine function looks like this. approximately. You should be able to see that if you take this sine function right here and shift it left pi over 2, what you get is the cosine function. And that's what this is. This plus pi over 2 in the parentheses there, that is a left shift of that much, pi over 2. So the cosine function is sine of x plus pi over 2. So that means the derivative of the cosine function will be the derivative of that, sine of x plus pi over 2. So let's write that. The derivative of the cosine of x is equal to the derivative of the sine of x plus pi over 2. And that's easy to do because we know how to differentiate the sine function. So let's just do it. This is going to be the cosine. The derivative of sine here is the cosine of that. So it's cosine of x plus pi over 2 times the derivative of the inner function by the chain rule. But you see the, this is a constant. So the derivative of the inner function is just 1. So it doesn't even make sense to write the times 1. And that's it. The derivative of cosine x is the cosine of x plus pi over 2. Now, think about this. Remember the the x plus pi over 2, this again is a left shift of pi over 2. So what happens if we take the cosine function and shift it left pi over 2? Well, again, that's pretty easy to see on the graph. Let's take our cosine function here. Okay, about like that. These are tricky to draw well freehand, but you get the idea. That's the cosine function. And if we shift that left pi over 2, we get this. And you might recognize that. That's the cosine function. And when we shift it left, pi over 2, we get the negative sine function. So the derivative of the cosine function is the cosine function shifted left, pi over 2, which is the negative sine function. And there you have it. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So here's a summary of what we have so far. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. And the derivative of the cosine x is negative sine x. So take note, we differentiate sine, we get cosine. We differentiate cosine, we get negative sine. Now what's going to happen if we differentiate the negative sine function? Now this ends up being really easy. The derivative of negative sine x, this negative sine x can just be thought of as negative 1 times the sine of x. And a constant multiplied by a function, when we take the derivative of that, the constant can just pop out front as a constant multiplier. So this negative 1 pops out front, and we, we have the negative of the derivative of sine x. So this will be negative cosine x. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. 
and let's differentiate negative cosine. Well again we know how to differentiate the cosine function. This negative sign just pops out front and so we have the negative of the derivative of the cosine. So it's negative negative sine x. So it's just sine x. So we see a pattern here. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. And the derivative of the negative cosine is the sine function. Now we can write all of this like this. If I say y is equal to sine x, then I can say y primed, the derivative, is cosine x or y double prime the second derivative would be the derivative of the cosine function which would be the negative sine x and then y triple primed would be the derivative of the negative sine function which is negative cosine x and the fourth derivative would be the derivative of that which would be the sine function again and the fifth derivative would be the derivative of sine which is cosine x and you see the pattern here sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. That pattern would continue indefinitely. And you can see all of these on the graphs too. I'll just make a graph real quick. If we graph the sine function, it looks something like this. And if you graph the cosine function, it looks like this. That's that function right there, the cosine, is the sine function shifted left pi over 2. If we differentiate it again, it's this function shifted left pi over 2. So now we have negative sine, which looks like this. And if we differentiate that, we get negative cosine, which looks like this. And if we differentiate that, we get the sine function again. And if we differentiate that, we get the cosine function again. All of these curves are very similar. Each one is the previous one shifted left pi over 2. So anytime you have a sine function or a cosine function, or the, just the simple negative of those, negative sine or negative cosine, differentiating that function will simply shift it left pi over 2. So you can see this graphically, or you can see the results that you get algebraically.